You haven't lived until you've heard the show Americans are talking about. The show that launches its listeners to the height of humanity. The audio hour that travels the landscape of adventure. The sound that comforts more than the clip of your first bolt. <sighs> it's the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. <laughs> We have a special treat for you. We are going live to Brandon at the Year Expo. How are you doing, Chelsea? Great. How are you doing, Brandon? Excellent. Thanks for producing in studio. Yes, we are live from the Outdoor Retailer, where Outdoor Adventure summits the airwaves. It's the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. I'm your host, Brandon Long, on the with you for the next hour. Again, we are live from the Winter Outdoor Retailer Show. We'll give you a quick rundown on some local news and events, and then we'll chat about what we've seen so far at the show. Um, so let's charge. To get started, we have some very sad news in the industry. This just broke uh, this morning, and so while we were at the show, uh, I got this uh, uh, on Facebook, actually. Free skier, uh, freestyle skier Sarah Burke has died from her injuries. Um, the Canadian freestyle skier Sarah Burke succumbed to injuries Thursday morning that she sustained in a fall January 10th while training in the Super Pike at uh, Super Pipe, the Park City Mountain Resort. This is all brought to, you, to us from uh, KSL. University of Utah officials confirmed in a statement that Burke passed away at 9.22 a.m. this morning, and she was surrounded by her family. As a result of the fall that she suffered, a ruptured vertebrae artery and one of four major arteries supplying blood to the brain. Uh, the emergency personnel on hand there at the time of the incident performed CPR, but um, she ended up in a coma on life support. And then this morning, uh, sadly, she, she passed away. So um, it makes, like, it's hard for me to keep it together. I don't even know her because just as someone from our industry, uh, their family expresses their heartfelt gratitude for the international outpouring of support they received from all the people Sarah touched. And uh, from the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show, we'd just like to, uh, to send out uh, our, our gratitude as well. Our, and our heart goes out to her family. And... Uh, you know, from, I haven't interviewed her or anything, but she was a stand-up person for the for the industry, and she progressed skiing further than uh, you know any other wim, woman has. So um, it's really sad, really sad. So moving on to a little better news, uh, trust that you and I were able to hang out at the demo day yesterday. Yes. And we ran into Jeremy Jones. Yes. Uh, Jeremy Jones just signed on to a TV series with Outside Television, and he's so down to earth down there. He's actually here on the floor, sales floor, down the sales floor, the whatever floor <laughs> down there, uh, at the Outdoor Retailer Show, and uh, he put our bindings together on our snowboards so that we could go demo them. But yeah, he just signed on to do uh, take his deeper series into like a short deal on Outside Television, so congrats to both Outside Television and Jeremy Jones for that uh, little media there. That's good. Yeah. Little television show. Also, uh, coming to Salt Lake is the Volcom's Backcountry Access Tour. Volcom Stone hosts an open discussion with snowboard team rider uh, Brian Aguchi at a, very, at a few carefully selected local snowboard shops, and one of them is in Salt Lake at Salty Peaks. So that is January 21st, Saturday. Coming up this weekend, the Salty Peaks. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's a backcountry awareness tour. His friends will be there. I'm sure there'll be free swag and all that kind of stuff. So it's a good place to hang out for a few days and enjoy some fun. Uh, Ogden's Winter Fest was supposed to go down next weekend, and it was canceled because of why there's no snow. And then today it rained all day. Yep. Uh, there's, so there's postpones and competitions all over the place. But uh, there is, uh, in fact, the North Face is postponed. Their first stop of its Masters of Snowboarding series. The series is the largest open big mountain snowboarding competition in the country with three stops and more than 50,000 in prizes. Uh, the opening event was originally scheduled for January 20, 19th through 21st at Snowbird right here uh, in Utah. Um, however, the Utah stop will be postponed. So um, in order to provide more time for optimal competition, riding conditions to develop uh, according to organizers. So 
hopefully we can get some of these events back and rolling again. But uh, right about now, we'll move to Gear 30. I think that's what time it is. So, uh, Chelsea, let's hear some Gear 30 tunes, shall we? OMG, who is that? Is that Gear Junkie James? <gasps> I heard his gear is so hot. Oh my gosh, he's so hot right he's now. He's so hot right oh, now. Gear Junkie James. The James is so gear hot. Gear Junkie James, he's a junkie, junkie, junkie. A junkie for gear. What's up, James? Where's your gear? So we have in studio, uh, right here live, this is our portable studio at the Outdoor Retailer Show that we have made here. Bill Yerby from Bolay. Uh, we were able to test some of your Bolay goggles yesterday at the demo show, and uh, fortunately, they were the only goggles I tested because they were the only ones I, wa- I didn't want to take them off. We had flat, horrible light yesterday, and, uh, and, and the lighting on the photochromatic, if I, if I remember correct. right, the light, uh, is, that's the word for these, was phenomenal. It worked great. So tell me a little bit about the line that you're, you're debuting here at the show. Yeah, you know, the lens you were wearing yesterday is a lens that it's called the modulator lens. It's a photochromic lens. It goes from 22% on a bluebird day, which is one of the darkest lenses in the industry. And yesterday it was such flat light, you were, you were uh, skiing and riding at about 66% light transmission, which is the lightest lens in the industry. Mm-hmm. So what I, what's really great about the modulator for the consumer or for the everyday person is that you can put one lens in your backpack or in your jacket, and it'll work in any condition. And yesterday we kind of had it all. We had sleep, we had snow. We yeah. had everything. So uh, the sun played peekaboo behind the clouds. So every once in a while, you got to see the sun, and then the lens would tint a little bit, and then we'd be back to uh, like the overcast. So, and I think the most impressive thing, um, uh, Bolle is owned by Bushnell, and Bushnell makes a lot of optics, binoculars, rifle scopes, and uh, we have some of the best coatings in the industry. And one of the things that makes Bolle goggles great is the anti-fog coatings. And yesterday we had such bizarre conditions, but the big thing that happened yesterday, we must have put goggles on a few hundred people, not one goggle fog, and everybody had a great response to the product line. So it says a lot about the technology in the goggles, and uh, if you haven't worn modulator, you definitely have to try it, because it's the only thing I wear, and it's hard to take off once you get used to it. I'm glad you brought up the fog, because it was windy up there, and sort of cold, and so I put the hoodie on, and I zipped my jacket up all the way, and uh, so it was up over my nose, perfect opportunity for fog, and nothing. I tried to make... Tressa, tell me about your fog... <laughs> Into the maybe <laughs> wasn't it wasn't much. It didn't, I, it didn't yeah, work, right? no, yeah. Okay, no. So, but we tried to, we tried <laughs> tried to, fog, to fog them, them. <laughs> and they wouldn't fog. So, um, tell us about the modulator. Where are they going to be in certain retail stores uh, within Utah? Where can we find some of these goggles in the next year? You know, we're we're we're, we're in the uh, major sporting goods chains here. Um, we're in, in the Sports Authority. We're also in a lot of the specialty shops. You'll find us up at. Uh, uh, Jans, uh, mountain shops up in Park City and throughout the valley. Um, but we have a dealer locator at www.bolay.com. You can put your zip code in and it'll tell you where to go to get the Bolay modulator at a dealer near you, wherever you live. So it's uh, that's a good way to find out where to go. Excellent. Again, we have Bill Yerby here with Bolay, live from the Outdoor Retail Show in Salt Lake City, Utah, on the Ognatour, on the Ognatour Adventure Show. What else is happening in Bolay and goggles in the industry? Um, you know, goggles, they're still very fashionable, obviously, but really it's all about lens function and what we can do to provide you the best experience out there. And uh, one of the other things that's really interesting about the Bolay goggle um, is the Gore-Tex equalizer patch. We do this between the lenses, and what that does, if you're skiing, say you're skiing up at Altair Snowbird, you're up above 12,000 feet, uh, what that does is equalizes and balances the lens within so your optics stay the same. So sometimes your optics can get changed at high altitude, this balances the lens. But if you were to get moisture, it wicks it to the patch and out through the vent. So there's a lot of key ingredients, but really it's all about technology. Um, this year, Bull is also launching ski helmets uh, and snowboard helmets uh, for the first time. Uh, we've been a real, uh, we're a top player in the industry when it comes to goggles, but we've also got a real neat helmet line, and today everybody's accessorizing. Mm-hmm. The helmets are matching the goggles. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, it's really it's important. important right? You so, have to look cute on the mountain. You have to. <laughs> so we're, we're working on that. We're working on, we're working on the computer. <laughs> I was really impressed. I was really impressed, actually. He had one for Brandon and one a little more loud for me, so more conservative, a little more playful. Well, after we figured out which lens we 
we wanted. It was, okay, now what color? Let's, <laughs> let's figure this out. So, yeah, it worked out great. Yes. Excellent. Uh, anything else uh, as far as Bole is going? And what about, like, these crazy, some of these goggle companies using, like, GPS and stuff? Yeah, we're, we're all working on that. Uh, you know, one of the things I was... You know, Bluetooth is obviously a big deal, especially with uh, helmets and uh, speakers in your helmets. So, yeah, every, the technology piece, that's what I'm talking about. It's mm-hmm. just like everything else. Yesterday I, I found a uh, carbon fiber snowboard and the thing weighed yeah. nothing, and it was just the most amazing thing ever. So you're getting better and better technology as we get better and better coatings. And also the technology is we're going to see cameras and goggles soon. Oh, uh, you know, sweet. You, can, you know, yeah. take your, what, what you're doing and, and uh, enjoy your experience after wow. you get home. Point that's of view. exciting. So, yeah, video editing. Excellent. Well, thanks, Bill. I appreciate you coming in to the Ogden Outdoor Adventure show live here at the Outdoor Retailer, and uh, look for Bole goggles at your favorite local sporting outlet uh, in Utah, and also some of the big online chains as well. Yeah, and I, I forgot to mention Sportsman's Warehouse also carries our Bole goggles. So nice. Right on. Okay, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks, Bill. For the thanks, Bill. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. All right, sweet. And then uh, we'll start continuing after the break. We'll take a break now. Yeah. And then we'll come back after the break and talk about what we've uh, demoed yesterday at the, uh, at the demo at uh, their Solitude, as well as what uh, some of the products that I've seen today walking the floor. Got in about seven interviews this morning, and so we'll talk about those. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show live from the Salt Lake Outdoor Retailer Winter Show 2012. This is, uh, you're listening to the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show, live from the Winter Outdoor Retail Show in Salt Lake City. Uh, we just had uh, Bill Yerby with Bolay on, bringing us the latest in goggle technology. And now we want to talk a little bit about what we demoed yesterday. We were up at Solitude demoing gear, and I got on a couple different uh, snowboards, three to be precise. And we'll talk about the differences in those, as, as well as some other gear that we have seen today here at the show. So, James, would you like to start us off, Mr. Gear Junkie, about your demoing experience yesterday at Solitude? Sure. Um, demo was good. Uh, went to uh, Solitude, and it was just an awesome day. Uh, I think I got on about six different boards. Um, K2, Jones, Burton... Uh, uh, the brand new Atomic that we've not sent out from the program. <laughs> that we have with the Weaver Outdoor program to rent next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's be good to know. So what was your favorite that you demoed and why? You know, I really liked the K2s. Uh, uh-huh. They were really responsive, um, held a good edge. Um, yesterday was great conditions if you like icy and packed um, <laughs> run. It was a little rough. With a little layer of powder on top towards the end. Yeah, just to hide the Little, ice, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you definitely didn't want to hit the ground or even like sit down because it hurt. Just I, I saw you fall a couple times. I, I, took, I, took, I took the last run of the day. I took a sweet uh, fall and hurt my bum. But, uh, you know, it was good. It was fun. First day out for me this season, and so I had a great time. Um, the K2s, man, they just held the edge and, and they powered through all that stuff. No problem. Uh, the Atomic from. Was that, was that Rockard? They were, yep. yep. Yep, they had the blunt tip on them. Um, the name really kind of escapes me right now. But, but to keep in mind, and these are these are available for next year, so we demoed with mostly 2012, 2013, with the exception of the Atomic that we have at the outdoor program. Right. Well, it's just kind of actually available next year, too. So. Yeah, yeah, right. until we get a lot more snow, we're not going to be sending those out just because, you know, we don't want to damage our new stuff. But uh, they are a great time, so hopefully we get plenty of snow. We get that five foot dump that they're calling for this weekend, and then we no Mageddon. <laughs> there we go. Like right that. now it's like Raina's getting, and it's not working for me. But no, nope. yeah, sweet. Well, um, cool, Tressa. I was only lucky enough to ride two boards because we were having fun walking around. We got some few, we got <laughs> Looking some at everyone and in interviewing. Yeah. Yes, that was fun. So I um, I demoed one of the Jones boards. I'm not sure which model it was either, and I totally dug that board. It was it was just totally responsive to me. It, was, it held its edge for sure. The bindings on it were a new company called New, and I really, really liked those bindings as well. I felt super stable and comfortable the in it. The new company was called New. New, new. yes. But not to fail to <laughs> No. And then and this was, they're actually manufactured by Nidecker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with so. the Jeremy Jones... Um, his name on it and everything and so he was there he was there and uh, he, he was like super down to earth super cool guy 
I asked him because I ran into Jeremy Jones board too, and I said, "Okay, you want to tell me a little about a bit about the board?" And he said, uh, "No, I don't really need to tell you. You can just go ahead. It's a full mountain free ride board. Have at it." And I, okay, there you go. Tell us itself. That's yeah, all you need to know. It's so, true. Uh, I wanted to walk away with that. And yeah. then what was the other one that you were the looking other excited one, about? It was mystery. Was the company mystery? Actually, no. The, the, no. the board was contract. Oh, was it yeah. contract? Yep. Okay. And I think they're a European board. And, uh, yeah, I actually looked at them online here the other oh. day before I, before, when I got the email. Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't necessarily... They, they were kind of the twin tip part. Yeah. yeah. And I had never been on one That's before. Right. Yeah. I, uh, it was, it was pretty interesting to, um, demo boards like that, because I've only had my own snowboards, and I've only rode three in my life. And so it was really interesting to jump on something that was a park board and to see how it was. It was a little more, um... Squarely is what we were saying, and that's fully the word I could describe it as. I, I didn't feel so comfortable on it, and towards the end of the run, like it, it was a little bit better, but it definitely was not. I'm not a park rider for sure. No, Brandon didn't really like that board. That <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a mixed emotion. So, okay, first of all, I've learned to really love my personal Burton custom because after yesterday's demo day, I thought, huh, I really like my own board. <laughs> um, but Burton has a, some sweet new rides coming out. They have, I thought, I think it's like the mist. I thought it was the mystery or the mystic, the first person that I tested, and uh, and, and that's that one is a 162, so it was a little longer than what I ride. But I, I tell you what, it was like it threw you into your edges, and uh, I really I really like that. And I did like the bindings that they had. And the new bindings were coming out in the uh, 12, 13 year, so I'd want to encourage people to look for the new Burton bindings. Uh, the Jeremy Jones board, as much as I love the brand. For me, it was, it was work. You had to work that board. You had to work to stay on the edges, and uh, you couldn't be lazy with it at all. Heavy. It's a power board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you all, you got to be a powerful snowboarder to ride that thing. And unfortunately, the conditions yesterday were were bad, to be yeah. to, to right honest. They, they you know, were difficult. They were yeah. difficult, and there weren't a lot of powder. And so I would like to, to ride that board in a bunch of powder and see how well that mm -hmm. Because I think it's, I it's for big mountains, and we were on small ice hills. <laughs> you didn't. So, yep. It was a little less you want enjoyable. Hope. Yeah, you don't want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anything? Did you demo anything else? Any skis or anything? No, uh, I didn't do anything else. Um, but yeah. the, but I know you guys had goggles. Yeah. yeah I talked about that yeah. earlier. Um, so anyway, today at the show we got to see quite a few stuff actually already. And then uh, Greg, are you prepared to like jump into anything? Anything interesting that you saw today already? Yeah. Um, Couple things. Couple things. Uh, we went. I went by swung by Sierra Designs, and they have a new uh, treated down that won't absorb water, or it absorbs a lot less water, and it dries much quicker than a normal down. Nice. And they've put that in a few of their down jackets and sleeping bags. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, Brooks Range is doing the same thing in one of their jackets. Um, but this down, it, it dries as quickly as a synthetic. Um, it is warmer and lighter weight than a synthetic. Um, and it doesn't absorb water, just like uh, about the same as a synthetic. So that's a cool and exciting thing. Um, no longer in, in cold and wet climates do you have to have a, a synthetic sleeping bag or a synthetic jacket because uh, you can use it down and it, you'll get the same performance um, for a lighter weight. That was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of companies are still using, uh, are focusing on the air permeable membranes for their jackets, like Neo Shell and um, Mountain Hardware Strike U and similar jackets like that, and um, that's being pushed further. Uh, a couple things, Outdoor Research uh, and a few other brands, um, Rab and, and some others, they're focusing on um, different types of um, material blends, I guess. Um, a lot of a lot of these jackets are going to like a high loft gridded fleece or uh, a real warm but breathable jacket for like um, climbing and in cold and wet conditions. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think technology in the in fabric and materials is, has come a long way. Um, Synthetics are, are continuing to grow. Um, Prima Loft is, uh, you, you can find Prima Loft in just about any line of, of clothing now. Um, whereas it used to be down, down used to be huge. Well, Prima Loft is, is about as close to down as you can get in a synthetic. So you're finding Prima Loft lines and everything. 
Um, trying to think. Uh, Easton Mountain Products had some cool uh, snowshoes that are a, a cool racing snowshoe that's quite neat. It had a carbon fiber woven decking material. Um, it's much lighter than the than the regular decking, and uh, and you can actually the binding is made to just screw into your running shoe. So if you're an avid runner who who hates to uh, hates the winter because they can't get out. I mean, you can get some of these snowshoes. They weigh a little over a pound, like a pound and a half each. Um, I mean, hardly anything. Carbon fiber decking, super light aluminum, uh, and you can just screw them right onto your running shoes and, and run the trail. Yeah, the I, I asked them, that, like, how do you do that? And uh, and you, you just said, yeah, it just comes it just comes with a little dowel thing on the inside that you screw your yeah. your regular trail running shoes into, and then they're like permanently on. <laughs> they're not permanent; you just unscrew. But you know what I mean? They're like on your snowshoes. I so mean, if you if you've got an older pair of running shoes um, that may be a little bit more worn or something like that, or you just got a running shoe to use for the winter, but you just can't get out because of all the snow, screw them onto your snowshoes and go for a run, and uh, maybe. Get a might take a little bit more work, but at least you're not stuck inside all winter. So that's pretty pretty neat. Um, well, I know there's a lot of manufacturers, snowshoe manufacturers, that are doing this no the running specific shoes mm-hmm. now too. Yeah, right? you can do more of that fitness stuff. Um, also, there's there's snowshoes that I saw um, from Easton um, that are women specific, so that uh, they're contoured, so that when a female takes a step, it's a little. It's not as wide as most males are, um, are, so they're contoured so that they can sit within, like, in each other. I'm like, show you, I'll show you with my hands. You can see the, see the radio waves. Uh, <laughs> I, I totally so, visualize. I got yeah. it, too. Yeah. yeah, but you don't have to walk like you just, uh, you know, like got off of your life. horse or yeah. something. You can actually, yeah, keep your your um, your steps closer together, and so they're they're integrating that into um, the female shoes, snowshoes. So uh, look for that. I, I they saw it in Houston, awesome. but I didn't know if anyone else was manufacturing that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, Easton has, has that shape. I know a lot of companies for their women's specific snowshoes go to a narrower snowshoe. Mm-hmm. Um, but Easton has definitely had a unique shape that, that looked pretty cool. I'd like to try those out. You know, one thing with the Easton shoes, if, if you guys haven't seen them, uh, the binding system that's underfoot and the crampon is yeah. actually split so that if you're walking over a rock or something, the whole binding doesn't pivot, but the oh. split in half does. Nice. So you can walk a little more natural and just kind of roll over these things instead of just kind of clump over. Or you can, when you're side healing, yeah, you just kind of flex. And, yeah. and it was really cool. I saw that at the demo. and awesome. I've got a meeting with those guys actually tomorrow. So I'll nice. be really checking things out. And their frame just kind of articulates a little bit so that, again, you could do more of your side healing, which was really rad. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, for, for those of you that, that love the car camping scene, um, I met with Primus this morning, and they introduced some really cool camp stoves. Not their backpacking stoves, although they have a cool lineup of backpacking stoves as well, but just their camp stoves, their propane stoves. Oh, man, they were super nice. Uh, They're all um, powder-coated, real easy to clean. Uh, You don't get grease down in in the bottom of your stove. It starts to stink if you can't get it to clean. Super easy to clean. Really cool features. Uh, I think the price on those starts at at about a hundred dollars and goes up to three hundred depending on how fancy you want to get. But I mean, one of their stoves that had had lights on it for cooking at night. It had a timer. Sweet. A timer. <laughs> I, I want had, that stove. Me I mean, too. It was. It looked like it was a full-on portable grill. Nice. Uh, your, your steaks and stuff. It, it was you know nice. what we need to try? I think this is our next move for car camping at the outdoor program. Is to get the backcountry chef um, their oven. It's a full nice. like, a miniature Backpack real oven. oven that you just take car camping and you can like bake anything you want. Brownies. Well, speaking of car camping, this, this is even like the ultimate. Uh, Goal Zero now has a uh, 
a generator that's powered by the sun, and you can plug up to three full-size refrigerators into that thing. You can have a backup generator for your cabin. Wow. It's incredible, all powered by the sun. And so, like, you can throw that in your RV, and instead of when you're in your RV park, and they're like, oh, no generators after 8 o'clock, you're like, ha-ha, I'm running my generator right now. It's silent, completely silent, because wow. it's run, run by the sun. Yeah, and it has different ports so that you can, uh, has, like, uh, the ports, like, on your computer, same port there and then wow. USB ports yeah as well as like the bigger voltage ports wow, on there wow that's so, awesome yeah uh, spent some time actually down there with Goal Zero speaking with the rep and went through their full line and I'll post that interview up it took him a while to get through everything there matter of fact Goal Zero they're from Utah keep in mind uh, they're actually the roots are are from Africa because the the inventor owner guy was doing these missions in Africa and could see how people needed um, energy there and lights and so I thought well this here's an opportunity and so he came out with the solar system uh, b- business and go zero and so they're here in Salt Lake and they're outgrowing their Bluffdale location and they're moving this weekend during OR so not only are they they have their reps here in the booth but they're moving their entire offices because they're expanding so fast um, and then James we have you seen the lights yet we actually have go zero lights for our yurt they were uh, on in I've, the offices I've seen them. yeah yeah I think we get like we have one battery pack and I think four different lights, LED lights, and you can run it on one charge. I think it's like 36 hours straight with those lights. Wow. Nice. And they have a brand new, like, it's, it's so small. It's just this little mini pack that you can put on your backpack as you're hiking and it'll charge and then you can charge your cell phone, your, um, your little iPod. iPod and iPad and the size is, is minimal and so now or your uh, GPS if you need to charge it in the back country so you, you can really almost always have an energy source and uh, look for this stuff to be coming out soon too so good stuff from Gold Zero Any, anybody else? MSR had those really sweet poles that were oh that yesterday at the demo yeah show. those yeah. were awesome poles I can't I won't why did okay. you like those poles I like them because they were so easier like, like so much easier like when I go backpacking my, the poles that I have always um they come in done like the, I they can't, the twist lock. yeah, the twist lock, and it just always comes in, and so I'm always frustrated, always like trying to get it to stay, and um, and so these ones don't have the pin poles, or how, how was that? They don't have the pull, the pins in it that, what is that little thing called, the little notch? The little, well, some of theirs did have or a notch, did, but, but they, the other ones don't, they're all, it's all internal, yeah. and it's all operable from the handle. From the handle, yeah, you put your hand in the little strap and pull down, and then you like, Pinch up on this little um, like a lever. Trigger, trigger, yeah. yeah. And you can take it up all the way down or all the way up just by putting your foot on it to pull it up or pushing it down. Super slick. Super yeah. slick, You don't yeah. have to loosen anything mm-hmm. or uh, try it. Yeah, it's, it's all done at the palm of your hand on the go while walking. Just slip it on your foot, pull it out, or push it And they it had another pair that was so lightweight. I couldn't even believe how light it was. And I, I honestly can't remember which that one did but it was way lightweight and um they had two like one that had three do you help me out on this one they had like three different things or like two yeah three different settings or two different settings so but there but what we did because we're we can't remember so we've seen so much we take a lot of pictures (laughs) not only do we take a lot of pictures but we interviewed these people and so we'll play the interviews and we'll get those queued up so that when we come back we'll we'll release like one a day or something so yeah um yeah more to come we still have more gear to talk about but we're going to take a quick break we're live from the winter outdoor retail show in salt lake city you're listening to the ogden outdoor adventure show take a break we'll come right back with some more uh fresh gear that we saw today in just a minute you're listening to kwcr 88.1 weaver fm ogden's radio station you're listening to kwcr fm ogden Adventure show with Brandon. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks for producing live in studio. No problem. Back in O Town, mm. <laughs> holding down the fort. There we are live at the Winter Outdoor Retail Show in Salt Lake City. It's the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. Uh, I did get to meet uh, Bear Grylls earlier today. Lucky ducky. I know. I know, right? And uh, he's just like you see on TV. <laughs> like he can't sit still for very long. He was like, "Okay, let's oh, go. Man. Let's go check out the gear." Jesus. All man, no, no playing around there. All man, no playing around. And uh, he's got a new line. He's teamed up with a company here, and I'm going to look it up. If somebody can talk for a minute, I'll look it up. I think um, he's been with Gerber for a while, right? Yeah, another one. Nice. 
It's a new one. Adventure knives, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. While we're dropping names, I uh, <laughs> I, I literally ran into uh, Ed Beasters this morning. Oh, big nice. legend and uh, kind of a one of my. I'm a big fan. And then, like 45 minutes later, I almost ran into him again. I he had about 50 people around him as he was walking down the aisle. But hmm. anyway, that was kind of cool. Uh, crag hoppers. That is cool. It's crag hoppers. So is that what it is? He's out there. Yeah, he has he has like a shirt and a jacket and everything. They're they're out of the UK, so that's why we're not really too familiar with them. But we will be after this weekend. <sighs> Spare grills by crag hoppers. <laughs> the ladies love him. Yes, the they do. Spare grills. Is that an all man fragrance? It comes out next year, I believe. But uh, the hippie smell. Yeah, yeah, he was really chill. He just came in, so he's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm late." And then he opened it up to questions, and then so people asked him questions about what about the show and about uh, who's inspired by and things. And he's actually given a lot of talks recently to scouts, Girl Scouts, and Boy Scouts, and kind of helping them out from the ground floor, uh, get fall in love with nature. He was heavily influenced by his father um, that got him out into nature uh, when he was a kid. So, Evil then, grills? <laughs> Pop, <laughs> <Papa> grills? <laughs> Which is cool. Uh, and then uh, to bring it on home, uh, one of the first companies I met with today was Climate. Climate is straight out of Ogden. Um, yeah, they have uh, a... They're, Introducing at the outdoor retail show today a full-length pad that's uh, fully like uh, fully featured. They're fi- kind of famous for their climate inertia X-frame pad, which has the funky shape and the missing parts in it or whatever. But this pad is a uh, full pad, and uh, got to lay on it and give it a test ride, and it's super comfy. And so uh, they're continuing their their pursuing uh, breaking uh, technology and introducing new items to outdoor industry. Uh, they also came up with like a camp chair that's super packable, folds down really small, and you can take it to ball games or whatever, and it's a, it's just, it takes a couple breaths, blows right up, and you're good to go. So good stuff from them as well. Um, more gear. Uh, for, uh, did you see any more that you were stoked on? Because I, uh, I, didn't really I, think, I, I wanted to talk about darn tough socks from Vermont because what I did first was go around to the local some of the local places uh, climate and we talked to Solomon and Sunto which I want to bring up Sunto don't let me forget Sunto um, and then I thought well let's go as far away from Ogden as we can which was these darn tough socks from Vermont darn tough because I thought oh, I like the name that's hilarious mm-hmm. so I go to interview them because I didn't know I didn't know anything about them turns out they're made in the United States, they do get some of their wool from New Zealand because it's hard to get all your wool from the United States. You don't produce that much. The merino wool. So, but they're all manufactured in this little town in Vermont. So they're completely American made. Um, they use more wool per square inch or per square whatever than any other sock company. And they're the only sock company that's unconditional lifetime guarantee. Wow. So right. no matter what, he, yeah, he's like, you can put these on, run down the street in your socks, and do whatever you want to do, and we will replace them. Wow. Darn tough Vermont. It's, it's really cool, yeah. And so uh, they have a bunch of different lines. They have, like, the contracts with the military, uh, but they also have um, hiking and trekking lines, uh, snowboard skiing line, uh, female-specific, and another one that I can't think of. So uh, I think uh, they just, REI just picked them up. Otherwise, there wouldn't be anywhere else in Utah that sells them. So I think they're... Uh, but for more information about Darn Tough Vermont Socks, check them out online. And then um, briefly met with the Sunto rep. And I can't remember the name of the new Sunto that's coming out. She told us like five times, and I repeated it three so I wouldn't forget. And now that we're live on air, I can't remember the name. But it is. Sunto is... And this, this, they've solved the problem that we all have with watches because we're either we either know how at what altitude we are, or or if a storm is coming with a barometer, or we know our compass bearing, but then we don't have our GPS capabilities. It's like either one or the other. We with the GPS or the compass and the and the altimeter and stuff. But they've combined it into their latest watch, so we have that now, and that's going to be it's debuted here at the show. They actually did a private showing with the media earlier um i didn't know about it or else i would have tried to get into it but they so they debuted the watch um so look for this to be you can actually use it with um like your heart rate monitor as well so you can train with it 
Uh, you, it's linked GPS, so you can do all that kind of stuff. Like I have, I have a Garmin watch that I used to run with, um, and I love it. But that's linked through GPS, and it can do some wonderful things. But then if I wanted to to use that same watch and try and figure out altitude or barometer and stuff, there's no way. So this is this one solves that problem. Look for the new line of Suunto coming out soon. Oh. Soon, and, and again, they're, <laughs> they're with Amber Sports right out of Ogden. I love you, Brandon. <laughs> Good stuff from there. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other items that we saw. Did, did, there was, am I missing some? There was a cool backpack that we saw yesterday. Remember the oh, NAR? NAR? Yeah, yeah NAR gear. That was so yeah, sweet. They started, yeah, and they started, like, making them for the smoke jumpers, remember, and that, um, so the material, oh, yeah. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so it's NAR gear, but it's not G-N-I-R, right? It's just, just it's N-A-R gear. And like you said, Trusted, this gentleman who was, um, I think he was a... He was the owner. He was the one who founded it. But he was a firefighter, oh. right? Oh, okay, yeah. He yep. himself was a firefighter, and he thought, oh, there's... These guys need some serious packs, and so he started making packs for them, and then he picked up uh, government contracts as well, and then he moved into some of the more personal packs for backcountry skiing and stuff. Did you look it up, James? Yeah, yeah, yeah? I did. Um, cool stuff online. Um, talked to the guy yesterday uh, a little bit, and was really impressed to actually see the product. In yeah. Person. And um, they've got big vinyl duffels, if that's your thing. That's kind of where I'm headed with gear storage anymore. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's, it's the big doubles because um, they're so convenient. But uh, checked everything out and it's it's amazing. Uh, the one part I liked about it was in his like emergency pack, it just folds completely open, and you have access to your axe in your first aid kit. So yeah, if you're a guide, the, the toolbox, I think. Yeah. Is is it? Axe name is, yep. Yeah, it flips that wide open, uh, just like a, a firefighter or a paramedic's Suitcase bag or something. Or, yeah. Or if you didn't want to open it all the way that like that, it would just like unzip so you can like just get in from the top part of it. So. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, it's, it's unique, and I actually haven't seen it. It's, you know, it sounds simple, like someone should have probably done that already, but he did it. And so yeah. NAR gear, um, and we didn't wear them or anything, but we took some pictures of them. Also interviewed him for a while yesterday, and so we'll get that up on the website soon, too. So, yeah. soon, tough. <laughs> <laughs> so James was late to OR today, which is weird. I know he's never late to the show, but he's late to OR. <laughs> To this show. <laughs> so, so, how many things have you seen on the floor today, James? I walked in the door and I came out. Here. <laughs> I just checked out real quick V Line climbing products and they had some sick boulder pads. It's called V Line? Or Z? The, 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 like the? Or the, V? Like V? Like V. And they and just specifically make bouldering pads? We just took a quick look as we Super walked in. Super yeah. neon. Like they're super, <laughs> super neon boulder pads. Super really neon, cool. Amazing. Yeah. Cool stuff. But maybe I'll go check out again during my free time. So then we met briefly with Solomon. I don't know if you heard anything that Solomon was offering, but they have uh, a new uh, free ride ski for females. It's female specific. It's called the Rockette, hmm. which is really cool. Um, and they are kind of. Uh, <laughs> so colors funny, on this. We need we need, we need colors. Color. It was I think it was black. I don't know. It was a purple, was it purple? Dark, deep purple it though. Okay. It purple. Deep purple. Yeah. It was a pretty purple guy. It was cute. We yeah. like pretty purple for sure. I don't like. I don't remember stars. I think it's a little bit more than that. No unicorns. No unicorns. It's purple. We're gonna make out here. So close. It was like cursive. Be careful. <laughs> James, that's uh, O R appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> or is it not appropriate? It's a fine line. But uh, yeah, no, Solomon has some new, some great new hardware coming out. They have new additions to their apparel lines as well. But we didn't uh, spend too much time going over that. We just kind of talked to them about their new ski lines, and so uh, everything they're expanding their backcountry free ride stuff. So I, we took pictures. I also have a press kit. We'll put everything up uh, on the website shortly. So. Another brand uh, that was pretty cool, just briefly stopped by at Scarpa. Uh, I'm a big climber. I really enjoy climbing, and, and uh, many of you will know that Scarpa's kind of been revamping their mountaineering boots um, with the help of Huey Sect in order to, uh, to lighten them up. Well, they have a new um, summer mountaineering boot that, tell you, it 
It weighs less than my like trail hikers. It just it wow. the thing is amazing. Super lightweight. Um, carbon fiber last. Uh, stiff enough that you could, if you needed to, climb vertical mixed and and uh, real steep ice if necessary. Um, it only has a hill welt. Uh, it's not not um, fully cramp on compatible as far as uh, having toe and hill bars, but. But definitely so for um, bars with a with a strap on the toe. Um, anyway, incredibly light boot, really looked nice, and uh, and apparently it was it's designed for going fast, super yeah. fast in the mountains. For Yuli. For Yuli, and uh, we're, we're great. But if it works for you, <laughs> if it works for Yuli, it'll work for you. For <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> that was a good. Um, <laughs> uh, Greg, I just want to, Greg. I know we kind of we split up. We sort of attacked this thing um, on two different ways here, and so um, I think I'm. I think I covered everything. You got Easton and Climate and Solomon and Sunto and Go Zero and Darn Tough Mountain Talk. So, uh, is, is there anyone that you're forgetting that you saw? today because there's so much to see it's going to take us another couple of days and so what we'll do is as we're going around we're interviewing them we got a lot of really good interviews and a lot of good picks so um we'll post those too okay. but um james what's the before you headed down here what was the company that you were most looking forward to seeing you know um i'm pretty much just sticking right now to the, the only people i have appointments with is the people i currently do business with um so nobody knew on my schedule, but that's why I try to build in some, some times between appointments where I can walk around and especially go visit the new vendor area. Um, you meet some cool guys, see some cool new things coming out, um, and so I always like to go down there and check that out, it's kind of the first thing, and um, potentially go back and make an appointment with those guys if, if I really find something I'm interested in. Um, so I really, you know, I'm, I'm just interested to see what I've got going on uh, in new products coming out from the companies I'm working with right now. Sweet. Cool. Well, this is the place. I mean, uh, the world of outdoor products is right now in Salt Lake City at the Winter Outdoor Retail Show. So um, appreciate everyone listening to our live broadcast. Tressa, uh, any parting words? Um... Definitely, if you can make it down here to just look at the surroundings. <laughs> this is my favorite week, this and in the summer, just because yeah, I love the whole outdoor world is we, here, and it's awesome. So We should mention it's not open to the public. Yeah, uh, sorry. You have to be a retailer, work in the, the industry, uh, media, or some form like that. That's why we're trying to bring you as much as we can uh, through the radio show and through, uh, we'll, we're posting stuff on Facebook. Look up Ogden Outdoor Adventure on Facebook. Also uh, shooting out a few tweets. Uh, tried yesterday and I couldn't get service as much up at Solitude, but uh, um, look for us on Facebook. Also OgdenOutdoorAdventure.com uh, Anything else you guys wanted to add? Mm-hmm. Alright, that'll do it for this week's Ogden Outdoor Adventure show. Uh, we'll see you next week. Look for us on, again, your favorite social media website. And uh, as John Muir would say, the mountains are calling and we must go. This has been the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show, live from the Outdoor Retail Show in Salt Lake City on KWCR 88.1 Weber FM, Ogden's radio station.